So our next talk is about editors. So those of you who don't know which one to choose, that's the talk for you. It's given by Kirsten Tonga, who is a, a Vivid developer and currently working for uh, HOT. Hello, everyone. Uh, so we come to conferences both to learn and to connect with one each other. So I thought we'd start with a quick, very quick. If turn to the person to your left and you have 30 seconds back and forth to tell them uh, how long ago you were an entry level mapper. Ready? Go. <laughs> Next question. Now, actually, before we do this, uh, uh, entry level mappers, raise your hand. Mid level mappers, raise your hand. Advanced mappers, raise your hands. How about superstars? Are there any superstars in the room? All right, a couple. Now turn to the person on your right. Uh, why did you come to this talk today? Uh, again, one minute. Go. OK, um, come back together. Uh, Now, uh, who's here because they want to uh, use mobile mapping apps? Do you want to work with other people? Do you want to help other people use mobile mapping apps? All right, people who work on mobile mapping app tools. All right, people who are here because they know me. <laughs> There's a couple. OK. Um, so we're here for different reasons, but there is an agenda. So I better switch to that. And I'm going to talk really fast because I have lots of information. Um, who knows HOT? Hands up. All right. So HOT uh, started with an earthquake. Uh, they were having trouble coordinating things. Um, many of the places most vulnerable are not mapped. The right people can't get to the right places. The right supplies can't get to the right place and not at the right to focus on those areas. I work for HOT. Um, uh, now, basic humanitarian mapping. First, you trace it with remote mappers, aerial imagery. Then you get community volunteers to go around and actually put the local data in. And then the humanitarian organizations can actually use that data. HOT has some good tools for remote mapping. We use, like, we have 180,000 volunteers. But there is a problem um, that engaging with and contributing to the map is unequitable, inaccessible, and immobile. I'm a mobile engineer. I'm going to focus on that last part. Uh, so um, this is just a little bit of data. More people in Africa have smartphones than computers. That's the opposite of Italy. Of course, more people have computers and smartphones here, but more people have computers here than smartphones. And if you look at the rates, smartphone use in Africa is growing really fast. People have smartphones, they don't have computers. If you, and most OSM tools are built for desktop. This means that step two has a problem. How do you get, if their devices are mobile, how do you let them use it? Um, so HOT has promised to invest in technologies to help People in our 94 countries vulnerable to disasters contribute to the map. I'm Kristen Tonga. I was hired in January. I'm a software engineer. I'm not a GIS person. I am learning a lot. Um, and I figured the first thing I had to do was figure out what is going on. So user research. Mobile mapping as it stands, there are many maps, apps. On a mapping campaign, you use two or three. There's not one you can use. Um, they're not built for low resource environments or non-English envi environments. And there's none with all the features needed. I care about a couple things. One of them is sustainability. It's, I, I have, the, the experience I've seen in the tech sector with that intersection of NGOs is sometimes you have a contractor write something, and then 
the contractor or the project or the employee leaves, and then the tech isn't maintained and it stops working. A good example of this is um, Open Map Kit. Who's used Open Map Kit here? So Open Map Kit stopped working. It was built by the Red Cross. Um, I've talked to the developer, the, the project managers who have worked on this project. They wish they'd done something else than build their own app. They wish they'd worked with the developers of ODK to actually get it the, the functionality into that core um, code. If you can work with existing developers and existing ecosystems, then in theory, you could actually have a maintenance um, strategy so that code can be sustainable. It takes a little longer because you have to collaborate with people, but um, it's we want things to keep working. Um, Second, it's really second, it's really important that we care about the user and check and talk to them and could change to adapt to things. So my plan is to observe, experiment, idea prototype, and then iterate so that um, did I even start this? What is my time? No, I didn't. Great. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so iterate. So I went to Africa for two and a half months and I did user research. Um, I talked to around more than 130 respondents. I collected data from more than 130 respondents. Um, I did focus groups. I did user observations. Um, I had lots of informal interviews, both within HOT and outside of it. Um, uh, introducing a little bit of the cast. OMDTZ, um, Open Map Development Tanzania, I collaborated with them pretty closely. Um, they first worked on a solid waste vamping campaign for the World Bank. It's important if you're going to build a landfill to know how fast it is to get to that landfill. If you build it on a very slow road, nobody might use it. They might dump illegally instead. Um, so the use mappers were doing this campaign. They also received a micro grant. They also helped me with a phone use survey because like, the phones that we use here are a little bit different, perhaps, than the phones in a, in a low resource environment. Um, La Vise has another community micro grant. I think the person from DTZ will be talking in a lightning talk tomorrow about some of these micro grants. Um, and then I did some focus groups with community members. Um, there's some other people, right? Here's, here's a list. Um, and they have different experiences. MDTZ is very, very professional, um, running very large data mapping campaigns. The community members, men, one of them had never, didn't know anything about a map, couldn't orient at all. Um, uh, none of the community members had um, OSM logins um, or that sort of thing. And Lavi Seha also was entry level. It hadn't done anything with um, GS, GIS data collection before it received a micro grant. Um, I also did a crowdsource campaign with HOT. I created some ODK surveys. Um, I had people download these apps. I had them try them out. Um, it takes too long to do in this setting, or I wish I could. Um, but it was four or five hours for a focus group and uh, takes a long time to actually try things. Um, we focused on four main applications, um, Street Complete, Organic Maps, OSM AND, and Vespucci. We picked these because they are open source and have existing um, maintaining, like current maintainers. Um, we also looked at Entry Door, but very it came out after this research had ended, after I've already lost Tanzania. Um, and so it's not included very much in this. Uh, um, what is my time, just to know? 14 minutes, thank you. There, now I have a timer, great. Um, uh, what phones are people using? It's important if you're building software to make sure it works on people's phones. This is a list of the phones used by um, the tech team and the field teams. Um, the field teams, uh, I, I did see that the field teams, the like SUSE youth mappers were using this quality of phone. I switched, when I went to Tanzania, I switched my old phone, my Samsung 5. It was an old, like, it like um, uh, 2014, so eight years old. 
It has about the the RAM of the phones that are being used today um, by 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 to the youth mappers. On the other hand, La Viseja, the community group I worked with, um, of the six people involved in that organization, five of them had smartphones, and three of those smartphones had um, one gigabyte of uh, RAM and four gigabytes of memory. And so you're actually dealing with phones with very, 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 like, they're slow, they have little space. Um, this matters, because maps are big. Um, I also did a household survey. I had some of the Suzy Youth mappers go around and, and talk to their neighbors. Um, uh, it was actually quite an affluent um, sample compared to Tanzania in general. Um, I think in general, I can't, it's, it's less than 30% of people have smartphones. Um, uh, but in this group, 86% um, of correspondents had smartphones. Of course, only 23% of them ever used a map. Um, and it was all Google Maps. There were no other mapping apps mentioned. Um, uh, so more data, but focus group results. Um, so I did focus groups. I basically said, download these apps, and I gave them some tasks. Um, and then I had them compare. Um, uh, you can look at these. I, I have all the data. You're welcome to look at it. Contact me if you want it. Um, we downloaded base maps, created POIs, corrected tags, uploaded to OSM, and activated editing. Um, uh, these slides are not quite as complete as I hoped because I, uh, because of airplanes. And as some of you know, um, uh, but different apps are like, they have different features. Some of them work really well for things. So some insights, core problems, space on mobile devices. An example, trying to download all of Tanzania on um, uh, an app, someone deleted a, 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 a wedding a, a wedding photo of their fian or a fiance's engagement photo and then had to go home and was in trouble. Um, and unfortunately, it didn't even work. We doubt we spent 45 minutes trying to download um, Tanzania on organic maps in, in Zanzibar. Of the eight students, only two were able to download. Tanzania successfully in 45 minutes. Partly, the internet was dropping. Partly, their phones weren't quite set up to be able to, to deal with that. Um, also, battery life. Um, with La Viseja, um, halfway through the day, we switched between, they switched between people who were mapping um, because one of their phones died. Um, it, it takes a lot of battery to be constantly looking for your GPS point. Um, I'll also point out that some of these phones have really bad GPS points. Um, in, in La Viseja, his phone was getting 3.4 kilometers off. Um, this meant that we had to figure it out based on outlines of buildings where we were. Um, it took us walking back and forth a couple times before we actually knew. Um, I think they might have started mapping on the wrong road if I wasn't there. Maybe, maybe not. Eventually, they would have figured it out. Um, ease of use. Um, street complete and organic maps were easiest to use. Icons, really clear. OSM AND was very challenging. It consistently ranked, ranked worst. Um, not even the SUSE youth mappers who have four years of experience were able to figure out how to turn on the editing program plugin. Um, if using OSM, if working on OSM and something has to be done to make this easier for someone to just enter. Um, feature set. If you only have limited features, you get some poor quality data. Um, example. People are trying, people who don't know very much about OSM and are trying to m match what they see around them with what they're seeing in an app. Um, uh, um, and so I saw people put um, like descriptors in, in, in name fields or, or, or um, 
lots of um uh sorry <laughs> there's many examples um uh people really liked vespucci vespucci was expected to not do very well on these user tests and my suspicion for why they liked vespucci was that we did it last and people who had been struggling to oh i want to delete this building how do i do it or oh this road doesn't have a name how do i add one and they'd ask on the other apps and they couldn't do it sometimes they'd add osm comments which of course no one will likely ever look at um, but they really needed full functionality to be able to, for example, say that a road was one way, um, say that a building had been torn down, um, switch the type of a um, store to update to what the reality actually is. Um, uh, there's Tagging is inconsistent between the different apps. There's defaults that are hard coded into the app to change them. You would have to go into the source code. Um, I can do that. Most people can't. Um, some of these make lots of sense. Some of them don't. Um, I'm not actually sure what a corner store should be in Tanzania. I'm not sure if they're gift stores, gift shops. In, Tan in, in Lavis, where in those rural villages that we all mapped, they were all gift stores. Like, how do you how do you make it really clear what tags should be there and make it easy for people? Additionally, there's additional tags that people don't necessarily understand. Handicapped accessible. People don't necessarily know what that is. They try to fill it in. The data is wrong. Like doing some where HOT is working on creating a better data model. It is both making sure you have the data model, making sure you explain it well, and adding icons and other things like that to make it easy to show. One of the things people really liked about um, um, Street Complete was some of those icons. Um, uh, right. Uh, editing quality, we got a lot of duplicates. We got a lot of duplicates partly because there's no live updates. Um, I, I, I walked around with Slavi Seha and I had been, um, uh, there'd been a big campaign to map all the mills. They'd already been mapped, but organic maps only updates once a month. And so they weren't on their phones. They added them again. Um, when you have a group of friends walking around, they would like add the same, like same coffee shop or same cinema five times and then you went into or like osm later and you had five points of interest um not being able to see what other people around you are doing makes it a lot harder to contribute good data it also makes it harder to um, fix um fix both internally and with your friend groups what's going on um uh Satellite imagery, everybody wanted it. If you watch people use Google Maps on the street, um, in uh, they turn on satellite imagery almost immediately. Um, there's a lot of places um, where the roads aren't quite straight and neat, um, and, it's, and the buildings kind of merge together. And unless you can look at them from above, it's really hard to tell from just an outline what's going on. Um, so, yeah, uh, download base maps. Uh, there's some there's some things. I'm gonna just jump to some of the like thoughts and conclusions for time reasons. Um, organized campaigns. Uh, ODK uh, is great in lots of ways, um, but I saw people struggle with managing groups of volunteers. We spent a lot of time trying to chase them down, and they lot of, spent a lot of time like with the current process. Um, you have to bring the data back to the office and then put it into JASM and then see, oh, they missed a block. And then you have to send them back the next day and you have to, you have the, like, you have to get the government, like the, the, the local government official, you have to pay them again. You have to find them again. They have to walk around with you again, right? Because you missed a block. If you had real time updates, you could know you're missing a block and like, just do it, right? Just tell people to go back immediately. Um, also, OSM to ODK conversion is a shit. I mean, it's hard. It takes a lot of time. Um, 
And both of these things are things that Rob is working on a conversion script. Um, Ivan Gayton has an uh, idea, a proposal for how to improve some of the management. Um, I also observed a campaign in um, Uganda that was low cost GPS. Um, they could use a conversion uh, app uh, uh, that would, a configuration app. It would allow many, many more people to be able to create high quality, high accuracy um, GPS surveys. They're getting two to 10 centimeters of accuracy with $200 of equipment when professional survey equipment is several thousand. Um, we're looking mostly at organic maps and OS, OSM and the reason we're doing this is because both cross platform probably matters and because it, you, if you're looking at casual mappers rather than big campaigns, um, you want people who are using an app to be able to fix it on the fly. Um, these are the two that have navigation worked in and support both platforms. Um, organic maps, you have to fix some server problems before you can build features. It's, you, it's easy to use, but if you can't download maps, it won't work. OSM and lots of features. Usability, user interface needs some work. We need to work with, we need to meet and talk to the collaborators, um, and that will be one of our next steps to figure out exactly how that works. I have some links, Q&A. So yeah, I'm very sorry because we're running really late. Uh, yeah. We can't take any questions, um, but you're here for the full conference. Yeah. So please talk to Kristen and uh, we get to the next talk. Thank you. <laughs>